This show doesn't feel like Star Wars. The show feels small and it's so obvious that it's trying to be a TV show. And then it doesn't even do a good job at being that. We don't need an hour long block per episode to tell these stories. I know that Disney knows that they're disappointing the fans right now. And at this point, there genuinely has to be a level of hatred that they have for us. We asked for Old Republic and they're like, nah, but we can give you this. Lucasfilm and Disney needs to understand that the reason why we're tuning out of Star Wars is because of projects like this, The Acolyte. Now look, there's definitely some positives to the show that I definitely want to talk about, but you need to stick around for the end of the episode because there's definitely some negatives that we need to address. And all of them have to do with Disney as a mega corporation because it's much deeper than just The Acolyte at this point. It's just greed and it reeks through the screen and there's no hiding it at this point. But before we could get into all of that, let me catch us all up to speed with the show. So in The Acolyte, we follow an assassin and we immediately open up with a fight with a Jedi Master, Trinity from The Matrix. Six minutes into episode one and the assassin already kills a Jedi Master. And throughout the episode, we're being introduced to other Jedi that were close to Master Ndara, who's the one that was killed. Here we meet Master Soul, a Jedi with the Killmonger haircut. We need to retire that fucking haircut. And his Padawan, X-23. So they get the news that this Jedi Master was just killed and they all have to keep it under wraps and they go on an undercover mission to figure out who the murderer is. We meet our main protagonist, Osha, who just so happens to look exactly like the assassin, May is the evil assassin and also Osha's twin. And when we get that reveal, we see the person who's been training her in the distance as they ignite a lightsaber for no reason at all. But I get it, it was just for people to be like, oh, a lightsaber, is it a Sith? We later find out that Osha and May grew up in a coven of witches. Their mother, Anasea, was the leader of the group and they didn't believe in the forces we know it, but instead they believed in the thread. And this is where the lore breaking starts to come in. The twins were created by Anasea, who created them through the thread. Without any explanation, all of the witches end up dying. Now at the end of this episode, I'm gonna bring something up when it comes to the production of this show. But what I need you guys to remember, please remember this. The budget for the Acolyte was $180 million. Remember that because that's going to be what gets us into the next part of this video. Here's one of the positives of the show, and, and I'm gonna jump the gun here. I really like the way they're showing us all of these Jedi because they all seem to have their own fighting style, and that kind of adds to everyone having their own personality. They use the force in interesting ways. It really shows us that Jedis are not to be fucked with, and it kind of adds more weight to when Anakin in episode one goes, no one can kill a Jedi. And out of everyone on this show, I think Master Soul is stealing the show. His character so far is the only character that I feel has any real weight and motivation to them. The Jedi were boring, wooden, and just dull. I admire that they attempted to hone in on the theme of duality. It's a major part of the original films, and this one just adds a little bit of a spin to it. With Jedi's contrasting the witches, I think that this was more of an interesting take because it sets up religions in the Star Wars universe. The witches refer to the Force as we know it, as the thread. And they have a different relationship with the Force, but it's in the way that they use the thread that now leads me to the cons. Power one, the power two, the power many. This show's fucking lazy. When I saw the whole twin sister trope, I wanted to turn the show off. Actually, I lied. Six minutes into the show, and I was already ready to turn it off because how the fuck did this assassin just murder a master Jedi? First of all, Carrie Ann Moss should have gotten more screen time. And then second, in a fight, you don't take your eyes off of your opponent. And so I don't care what's going on around you. Someone's actively trying to kill you. And so I felt like the throwing knife to the heart was a little bit cheap. In episode two, we see the death of another Jedi. And it's in the way that he dies that I'm more frustrated with. And I'm just trusting that the story is going to continue to unfold. In the way that he dies, I need there, not, not even I need there, the story needs to have a major philosophical corruption within the Jedi Order. In order for that man's death to mean something. Like we need to have Hydra levels of corruption within the Jedi Order 
for him to feel like I was wrong because he says something along those lines in his death. And so I really can't imagine a Jedi going out like this. And again, I really don't wanna seem like I'm nitpicking. I'm really trying to come into this with as much good faith as possible. And I say that because this show doesn't feel like Star Wars. As much as we've been seeing more Jedi, this still doesn't feel like this takes place in a galaxy far, far away. It feels like it takes place down the street in lot A, production studio one. This show feels small and it's so obvious that it's trying to be a TV show. And then it doesn't even do a good job at being that. The pacing for this show, and you know what? Not just this show, but Obi-Wan, The Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian season three, the pacing for all those shows fucking suck. This is a pattern that's been reoccurring. These shows feel like they want to be movies, but they can't be that, so they try to be a TV show, and they're not even doing a good job at being that. There's no in-between. This shit is a fucking plague. These fucking miniseries. It's annoying and it feels like a waste of time. We don't need an hour long block per episode to tell these stories. The settings so clearly feel like a set and it's hard for me to suspend my disbelief to the point where now even the costumes and the makeup look silly. It's like they're not even fully leaning into a bit. And because of that, the whole entire show doesn't work. With all the money being spent, just make a movie. At this point, Disney Plus is the reason why I've been turning my back on Star Wars. I wasn't a big fan of Obi-Wan. Boba Fett let me down. And so far, if you're enjoying this episode, please leave a like and subscribe. We're trying to grow the channel over here. And I would really appreciate you guys becoming one of our comrades. Let's continue. It starts to break the lore. The witches are able to create human life through the force or the thread. But as we know it, that's what made Anakin so special. It's one thing to be force sensitive and just decide to do something else with that ability, AKA becoming a witch. But then it's another thing when you start doing stuff like creating life. Because now the question is, where does that put Anakin as the chosen one? Now I told you guys to remember something for me. Do you remember the number? Good. Now, let me tell you about a little movie called Dune. I remember back in 2021 when I was sitting in that theater and the credits rolled. I sat there and I was like, huh, that's it. That's what I wanted out of Star Wars. And in that moment, I said to myself, I'm done. All I asked for Lucasfilm, good stories, good movies, something with meaning and impact that when we're facing a problem in real life, I could think about the courage of Luke or when I'm just a little bit too angry and I kind of want to get some revenge or something, I could think about how, okay, Vader crashed out and look what that did to him. These movies were also character studies and now all we're getting is just trash. Comrades, the budget for Dune part two was $190 million. Please tell me you remember the number I gave you at the beginning of this episode for The Acolyte. If we're doing the math, knowing this show will have eight episodes, that means each episode of The Acolyte costs about $22.5 million. Each episode is more money than, wait for it, Star Wars Episode Four. Each episode is more money than A New Hope. If Disney really wanted to, they could have taken this budget and given us a movie out of this. And the premise of this show, I'm not gonna lie, is interesting. The execution is what's the problem. So far, the show's not even over yet. So I really wanna give it some grace. But now I'm strictly talking about patterns here. Imagine if Obi-Wan was a movie and not some dragged out half-assed TV show that was just trying to nostalgia bait us to sell their platform to us. Think about how much emotion and story we lost because Disney needed to fill their streaming platform with stuff. My comrades, I bring this up to you today because this is a deeper issue than just the acolyte. This is a corporate greed issue. I'm sure the creators of the show mean well, but Disney's putting out these mediocre shows to further push their content onto Disney Plus. And in the process, the people in the suits don't care about story. The people in the suits don't care about what these stories mean to us, how they impact our day-to-day -day lives. They don't care about how some of these stories really do get us through dark times. All they see is dollar signs and who's subscribing to their platform. When it comes to the Acolyte, I'm hoping it'll pick up. But as of right now, it's just mid. It feels small, and at that point, it's just not Star Wars. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I hope to see you again in our next encounter.